Debbie with the Crafty Diamond. I hope everyone is doing well. And if you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. If you are not new, welcome back. I truly appreciate all of you and thanks for coming back. In today's video, I have my weekly whip and chat. And what um, this is, if you're not familiar, is that a whip is a work in progress. I am going to be working on Cauldron of Myrrh from Diamond Art Club, and this is by Ivy Dollamore. It is a licensed piece. It's 56 centimeters by 74 centimeters, and I've been working on this for just a little bit, not really a long time. I'm about halfway complete, or I should be um, today, and I wanted to go ahead and work on this one with you. I had another one I thought about doing, but I really want to um, focus on this one. And so today we're going to just chat a little bit. And if you want to pull out your work in progress, whatever that may look like, feel free to do so. And we'll just chat for a little bit and we will get to know each other a little bit more. And then um, we will go over what I plan on doing or my goals for October and anything that I have upcoming in the next week or so before um, before that happens. So first of all, how is everyone doing? I hope that everyone is well. And for those of you that are in the uh, storm path of Ian, I um, am praying for you. I've been watching on TV, seeing how bad that Florida is devastated. And there's just destruction um, all throughout um, Tampa. I have some friends that live in Tampa, so I've been talking to them when I was able to. We were worried in Georgia that it was going to be in the path under or Atlanta would be in the path of Ian. It looks like that um, the storm has veered, and so we are not going to get anything from it. Um, although today we do have some high winds and it is rather cool. I mean, it's, it's colder than it normally would be on a fall day. And we may even have to turn our heat on, which is very early for us. I've been really looking forward to fall, but to me, when these temperatures are as low as they are and then it's really breezy, that um, it's just really chilly. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with 310. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I'm going to start with 310. This is a square kit. And let's see, I am using, I just lost, oh, there it is. Okay. I am actually using Autumn Wreath, and this is the sampler from Enablers Outpost, and this is their Chit um, Putty, and I've been using it now for a couple of weeks, and I really do like it. It smells really good. It works very well. I don't have to change out very often. The only thing is that I have to remember to put a thin layer on instead of going thicker like I normally do because if it's thicker, it is not going to stay on. It's going to fall off and then it's going to be on my canvas. So I've gotten better with that. It was just a little bit of practice for me, but it's worked out perfect. I need to move this over because I cannot see very well. So if you are in any type of you know storm, or if you have um, issues related to Ian, um, then um, I'm definitely feeling for you. My um, husband works for our local power company and they are on standby um, to go to Florida whenever they can. They're just kind of waiting. They're also waiting to see if anything's going to happen um, to the Georgia coastal area which is around Savannah um, and Augusta. And so they're kind of waiting on that. So they are on full alert and he doesn't have to go out in the field anymore. That's something that he decided about four years ago that he was getting older and that he just really was getting too old to do a lot of the storm duty or he felt that he was. And then also the fact that 
his normal job was, it was very intensive um, when he was um, an electrician. And so it was intensive for him in many ways and it was very dangerous for him. And so he also had to carry a lot of heavy equipment. And so he just decided about four years ago, there was a position that came up that he was interested in. And so he applied for that and he got it. So now he is working mainly with their inventory. And then if the guys ask that are out um, doing a job, they can call and ask him, you know, what exactly that they need. That they're not really sure what part and that he knows right away and can tell them. And so he is doing that. And so he's kind of on standby for this rest of the week and the weekend in case that um, somebody needs something that he can easily have it sent, whether you know it's expedited or courier or if they're coming to pick it up. So he may have to go um, back and forth to work this week. But when he was on storm duty, whether it was for um, the winter or whether it was you know for bad weather or whatever the case was, Sometimes he even had to stay in a hotel in the Atlanta area. So he would be close to their shop and he wouldn't have to worry about how he was going to get there. He doesn't have to do that right now. Um, if it ever got really bad, he may have had to do that. But so far, so good. And I'm thankful for that because I always worried when he was going out for storm duty. Although storm duty, um, it's very rewarding because when people um, see that the power trucks are coming through and then when their power is restored, they are so thankful. And he liked that. He liked the fact that he was able to help others. And so now I told him, you know, you're still helping, but you're helping in a roundabout way. And so I think that he's finally embraced that and he really does like what, he, what he's doing now. So that's definitely a plus for us. And right now, like I said, it's just very breezy here. The wind is pretty rough, but it's not just horribly bad. And my dogs are actually loving it. They like the cold weather, especially my colleague. She has so much hair that um, the cooler weather makes her really happy. She's not really crazy about the wind though. So right now she's outside. I'm hoping I can finish this before they come in and then the small one starts to bark. She's really bad about barking if she hears anything lately. She's older and I don't know what's gotten into her lately, but that's what she's been doing. So that's what we're dealing with. Let's see, what has happened this week? It's been a crazy, crazy week more so than usual. Okay, so last Friday when I had my whipping chat, I do my whipping chats on Thursdays and then I have them uploaded on Thursday evening and then they're ready to go on Friday morning. So last Friday, I had to drive 138 miles for work and that was one way. So that wasn't exactly a lot of fun, um, especially I had to be there by 10 o'clock and I had to go through downtown Atlanta and that's never fun on any time of day, but especially early morning. So and I'm not used to traffic, so I was not real happy about that. But once I got passed through Atlanta, then I was actually okay. And then I had to go to another college and we had a meeting there and we are rolling out um, FBLA, which if some of you may recall from your high school or even middle school days now, is that um, FBLA stands for Future Business Leaders of America. And we had a program that was the same as FBLA, but we did not call it FBLA at the college level. It was called PBL, which it stood for um, a you know, Greek name. It was Phi Beta Lambda. And 
we do not have sororities or fraternities in our school, especially for a two-year college. And so it was very confusing because a lot of people, including students, thought that it was just some type of sorority and they didn't want to be any part of it. I need to get another glue dot for my finger placer. Where did I put them? There we go. I thought that I took care of that, but it just fell out. Okay. So, with um, PBL, and it had been PBL for years and years and years, and they decided that, and this was at the national level, it wasn't at my college or our state, it was at the national level that even though PBL was under the same umbrella as the FBLA for middle school and high school, it was very confusing because it seemed like it was just out there on its own. And so it was decided by nationals that PBL would form into the FBLA collegiate. So now we are doing that and we have not had our chapter going for a long time with the school that I work for. And we wanted to go ahead and get that started back up for our students. And somehow we were able to volunteer, but I didn't exactly volunteer. I did and I didn't in a roundabout way, but I told them once I found out what this was and the commitment, I said, you know, I'm really not interested. Please, you know, find somebody else. Well, there wasn't anybody, and so I am one of the advisors. Right now, I'm the main advisor, the only advisor, um, that is doing this. But my um, assistant or associate dean is helping. So that was really nice of her. She didn't have to do that, but she stepped up, and she's going to help. And so we're trying to get this rolled out. And so the annual meeting was that far away we weren't going to spend the night and so just drove and it was a nice day we we had to be there at 10 30 and we left about 4 15 we left a little bit earlier than others did because we had the furthest to drive and there wasn't a large crowd there'd be more than what there was there but there wasn't a large crowd and that was kind of nice too and so we were able to ans ask questions. They were able to answer them easier than if there were others that you know were there because she was able to do a lot of one-on-ones with us. And so that was really nice because the ones that actually had participated with PBL are no longer at the college or they're in different capacities at the college, but they are part-time. And so we really can't ask them any questions. When they were full-time, we obviously could, but as when now they're part-time, we really can't, which is kind of strange to me. But anyway, um, that was all day. We did, you know, seminars. We had lunch there. We had a little team-building exercise to get to know each other, which was fun. Um, it was very simple. And so that took Friday. And then on Friday... My boss said, you know, since we have far to go, we can go, we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave about 30 minutes earlier than everybody else. And so whenever I left, I had told my husband that they have a Bucky's that is on the way home. And if you're not familiar with Bucky's, it's like a truck stop. The best way I can explain it, it's like a huge truck stop for cars only. Trucks are not allowed. It's just for cars but they have all kinds of things there. They have food, they have hot food, they have, they do have um, gas pumps, but they had at least 80 gas pumps. I have never seen so many gas pumps at one place ever, and it was packed. People were waiting in line. Their gas was a little bit cheaper, so that's one of the reasons why they were probably waiting in line to get the gas, but I went in, I wanted to get us some t-shirts, because I had gone to Bucky's once, it's been a long time, and this one really didn't have very many t-shirts or hoodies. I thought, well, I'll get a hoodie. My husband told me to get him a hoodie because he wanted something from Bucky's as well, 
And so I looked and looked, and I'm like, I have got to get on the road. I finally asked somebody, and they said they really didn't have that many um, shirts right now. They were planning on getting some in, but they just haven't gotten very many shirts in. So I got me um, a snack. I thought this will be tie me over until dinner. And then um, I left. I had to get a couple of pictures at Bucky's just to show I'd been there. I went to the restroom at Bucky's and I looked. I had to count. Um, they had 90 stalls. 90. And so you never ever have to wait on bathroom at Bucky's because there's always one open. So I thought that was really cool. And so, of course, I had to tell my husband, like, you would not believe there are 90 stalls in here. And so, my daughter's like, well, take a picture. Well, I wasn't going to take a picture in the bathroom, even though nobody was in there. I thought that, I'm just not doing that. That would be really weird. Very awkward. So, I didn't do that. But I thought that was kind of funny that there were so many stalls in Bucky's. So, that was my Friday event. Um, when I left, I got into a lot of traffic coming home, of course. I knew that I would. Um, there was no doubt. I knew that the time that I left, the time that I was going to hit the Atlanta area, I was going to get into a lot of traffic. But I actually hit traffic 35 miles outside of downtown. So I wasn't even in downtown before I really started hitting traffic. There was a wreck on the side of the highway and people were going just very, very slow. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I got, well, I got up there. Once I got up there and I passed it, then it was smooth sailing again until I got to about 10 miles outside of Atlanta. And then it was nonstop, bumper to bumper. It took me forever. I finally got home at around 8.30. And I was absolutely exhausted because I left my house at 7.30 on Friday morning. And so I was just exhausted when I got home. And so my husband had went, he picked up dinner, which I thought was really nice. And so I had dinner and then I just basically just crashed. We watched a little bit of TV and then I went to bed and I was just so tired because I'm not used to one, having to work that long um, and having you know to be alert and pay attention. And then another thing was, I am not used to driving that much, especially by myself, because if my husband and I go somewhere, which lately has been few and far between, but if my husband and I go somewhere, then he usually drives. He's used to driving in traffic because he does it every day, and I don't. I am about 15, 20 minutes from my college, and it is just an easy drive. It's not ever crowded. I don't have to worry about a lot of traffic. And so when I got home, I'm like, I am just beat. I am mentally exhausted from having to deal with all of this. And then to taking a lot of notes and asking questions. And so I was just mentally drained. So Friday, I didn't get to diamond paint at all, which I always diamond paint. And so Saturday I got up and I did a few things around the house. And then after that, I'm like, I'm going to just sit in diamond paint and just relax and just enjoy my Saturday. And so I did, and I ended up getting the loom finish that I'd been working on. So that was definitely nice. I'm trying to fix this glue dot. It is giving me a problem. Okay, I think it's fixing it. So that was really nice on Saturday. We just kind of hung out, didn't do that much. And then on Sunday, my best friend came over. And so um, she had some cards that she wanted to drop off for me um, to give for cards for soldiers because I'm gonna be shipping that box out soon. And um, she lives about an hour from me. And I told her I could meet her, and she just said that was fine, that she would, you know, come over. So, she came over and spent a few hours, and then we um, had lunch. And then she left. And then once she left, I went to the store and got some things for the week. And I do not like going to the grocery store on weekends, but 
I don't have a choice most of the time. So I did that and that was my fun day. But I really enjoy her coming over. It's just a treat when we get to see each other, which isn't as often as we would like because she's really busy with her grandkids and I'm really busy doing you know things around here and taking care of my daughter. And so it's just really hard for us to get together as much as we would really want to. And especially towards the end of the year, it gets even worse because we just both get really busy. So from October to December, I am pretty busy. And then the beginning of December, it slows down for me because we are on break from work. And I have some plans for that. Let me tell you, I am going to be diamond painting quite a bit, but, and I can go over that later, but I don't want to get myself messed up on what I want to tell you guys. So that was on Sunday, and my daughter's 21st birthday was in August, and she had the, the stuff that's been going around. We have been really lucky, very fortunate, that none of us have gotten it. And she went to school, first two days of school. She comes home on day three. She's not feeling well. Test her, and there it is. So she basically missed her 21st birthday, which was really sad. We told her, you know, we're going to make it up to her, and, and she was fine with it. And then my best friend, when she came over, she gave my daughter a gift certificate to actually to Amazon. And so my daughter was really excited. So she's been shopping off and on all week, just looking at what she wants, making a list. She is really funny that way. She will use her money. She will keep it as long as she can. And then she is very particular on what she buys, what she spends and does with her money. That's my youngest. My oldest, if you give her $10, she's going to come back and tell you you owe so-and-so or you owe her for so-and-so because she spent your $10 plus she spent more. Now, she's gotten better now that she's gotten older, but still, it is just so funny on how different both of my kids are. But Paige has been, you know, watching and looking at sales, and I mean, she's got a list. And so, Cindy, if you're watching, she is just so excited that she has money from her Miss Cindy. So, that just made her really, really happy. So, that was, that was very unexpected, and I was very surprised and I was just so grateful that I have such good friends that um, think of my daughter the way that they do. And all my friends are that way. They always think of her and I, I do appreciate that. I am having problems with these three tens. I should not have gone with three tens, but I'll go over that in a minute too. So, that was the weekend, and then Monday hit, and Monday was the dreaded wisdom teeth removal for my youngest, and for those of you that are not familiar, my youngest daughter is special needs, and so it becomes very difficult on anything that we do. It's harder to explain things. She doesn't understand a lot of things. And it is just really hard to try to do anything. Um, whether, you know, it was the wisdom teeth or just, you know, whatever. Especially when it comes to doctor's appointments. Well, the dentist that, or the surgeon that we went to, the dental surgeon, um, he was just super nice. I could not have asked for a better surgeon. And I was really concerned. I was really stressed going into it. When I filled out the paperwork for her, I had put a note in there and let them know that, you know, yes, she has special needs and she is terrified of needles. They wanted to do an IV because they said that they do that in their office. It's better. They even have additional nurses there for just the IV. And then the doctor is also specialized 
So if anything were to happen, then he would know, you know exactly what to do. And he became, you know, highly qualified. And so I felt good about going into going into the surgery on that respect. But then I was worried because I'm like, she is terrified of needles. We're going to go into this and we are going to have a problem before he even gets started. And so um, they told me, I'm opening up the different scent here. Oh, wow. This one is amazing. This one's pumpkin pie. Oh, it smells so good. I'm going to try to put that on my single tweezer. The glue dots that I'm using, I'm using larger ones than I normally do. I found a box of glue dots that I really want to use up that was in my crafting card stash. And I thought well, this will work fine for diamond painting and they don't. So I'm going to see if I can get this to work. This may be too sticky. I haven't done this yet on a single plager. We'll see how this works. But I just could not say anything higher for these people. They did such a wonderful job. What they did is that they hid the IV, even though she wouldn't have even known what that was. She's not had surgery except when she was little and she did not remember that. They hid the IV bags from her and the pole and everything. And then they also told her that they um, were going to give her laughing gas and that was going to put her to sleep. And so she's had laughing gas before when she had um, some dental work done and so she remembered that she didn't have a problem with the mask or anything. They just put it under her nose. And so what they did is they waited until she was asleep. And then they went ahead and they administered the IV. And before she woke up, they had the IV out. So she never knew that she had an IV. She didn't see anything. And I thought that was really sweet because some doctors won't do that. But he was very good. He um, really took care of her needs. He was all about her instead of the process. And she told one of the nurses before, right after we had left, I was holding her hand and I said, I'm sorry, I've got to go now. And so she got really nervous. And so um, she told the nurse, she said, I am just really, really nervous. And so one of the nurses said, would you like me to hold your hand? And I thought that was, that was the best. And so I almost lost it right there because, you know, a lot of nurses, they're really good. You know, we've never had any problems, but, and we love, you know, all the nurses that we've had, but all the nurses that we've had have been special needs nurses. And this one wasn't, but she knew exactly what Paige needed. And I was so thankful for that. And they had, I don't know why there was four nurses in there, but they were all super, super sweet. And they even said, my name is so-and-so. And and so um, she was, you know, like she was just knowing them forever. And they were talking to her and playing with her and, you know, just different things. And so when she came out of into recovery, her nose started bleeding a little bit. And so she, you know, got kind of scared and they're like, oh, that's normal. Let me help you. And so they were just so sweet and so kind. And I just could not ask for anything better. And so all that I had been worrying about was basically for no reason at all. There wasn't any need to worry because all of that went smoothly. She, um, she didn't really hurt on Monday. She said she wasn't hurting that bad. She cannot take pills and so I have to crush all of her pills. And so that is kind of a pain. I know she's not getting all of the dose, but um, the nurse told me, you know, don't worry, at least she's getting the majority of it. And, you know, that's all that we can ask for because we cannot, you know, get this in liquid and 
that you know the best thing she can't chew and so we'd rather her go ahead and do it this way they even gave me a pill crusher one that was better than what you could purchase and so that was really sweet of them too because they didn't have to do that they went in their stash and um she said that they have you know several and that you know still had the plastic on it so obviously it was new and so they gave me that and then they helped me put her in the car and she was, you know, rather drugged out. But by the time that we got close to home, she woke up, she was feeling okay because she really wasn't feeling anything. And she did not sleep at all on Monday. I figured, you know, she would be out. My husband said that when he had his wisdom teeth out, and of course he was about the same age that she was, he said that he was out for like two days because of the medication. And of course, back then, they just kind of numbed you up. They gave you something that, you know, made you think, you know, you were asleep, but you really weren't. But she just didn't sleep at all. Even giving her some um, Motrin that was stronger, she didn't. She didn't sleep at all on Monday. She was playing her games. Everything was good. So I was really happy about that. And she started hurting more actually on Wednesday than she did on any of the other days. So Wednesday, yesterday for us was a little rough. It wasn't horrible, but it was, um, it was a little rough for her. She's still really swollen, but this is fall break. And so she is able to stay out all week. And that's one of the reasons why we did it. Because that way she can rest all week. And then Monday she has to have a post-op and so she'll have to leave half a day on Monday. I may just keep her out Monday and then just get a doctor's note. And I know they'll give me one. So I may end up doing that. They'll give her another day. But then I think that she will be fine and good to go. So thank you to all of you that have contacted me, sent messages of encouragement, have put it underneath comments. I really appreciate you asking about her and thinking about her. And I told her that, um, you know, several of you have asked. And so that made her really happy as well. So hopefully we're on the mend from that. We don't have to do anything else for her um, for dental or for medical for the rest of the year. So that would be really good. And then my oldest came by and it's really funny because like I have a sister and we did not live together. She um, was born when I was, I think I was about 12. And so I was already older and we, you know, we weren't close in age, obviously. So we were always and still are really close and we never, you know, fought or anything because one thing we didn't live in the same house and then another thing is because of the age you know, gap. But with my kids, they're only three years different. They were always, you know, fight, fighting and fussing and, you know, just, you know, she, um, she, you love her more than me, you know, kind of thing. It was just, you know, typical sister stuff. Well, now that they are both older and especially my oldest, I am just so impressed with how she is with her sister. I mean, she obviously grew up knowing that her sister had some intellectual um, disabilities, and she's she learned from that. She's learned how to embrace people that are not always, you know, like you. And she has, you know, really grown because of that. So she came by on Monday, and she dropped off her medication for me. I didn't want to leave. And so she dropped off her medication and then she went to the store and got a few things. And then she also came in with a bouquet of flowers. It was in a nice little vase. And so she gave it to her. And then she also gave her a cute card on, you know, getting well. And so that made her feel really good. And then she also gave her some ice cream and she got her favorite ice cream. And she said that would help her whenever um, her mouth started hurting and was really sore because 
how cold the ice cream was would be really good. And so I did call the doctor to ask if ice cream was okay. And they said, you know, that was perfectly fine. That was a great idea. And so she had her ice cream um, on Tuesday because she was really, still really swollen. But she had ice cream on Tuesday, so she was excited about that and really excited that her sister, you know, thought of her. So that just made me feel really good that I didn't even have to ask her. She just said, I'm going to come over. I'm going to do this and I'll pick up her medicine. I'm off work. And that way you don't have to get out. You don't have to leave her there on her own in case, you know, she wanted to get up or something and she might feel dizzy. So that was just really, really sweet of her. And so I just have the best kids. I just cannot say enough about them. My oldest never listens to my videos. Every once in a while, she'll listen to a little bit of it and then she'll say, I didn't know that. I'm like, well, maybe you should listen to my videos and you might learn more. So it's been basically a family week. She's been really cuddly wanting me, you know, to be with her and to sit with her. And that's what she does when she doesn't feel good. She just wants me to hold her hand and to keep telling her everything's okay. But she has been a real trooper. So again, thanks to those of you that have asked. And for those of you um, that have emailed me and have heard me talking about her and talking about the upcoming dreaded surgery. So at least that is done. So now both of my kids have their wisdom teeth out. So that is definitely a plus. So that was our, pretty much our week. I work from home all week so I could be with her. I will go in tomorrow, the year today, um, Friday for a short time because I had to cancel my class on Friday last week to go to the FBLA meeting and I just cannot cancel two weeks in a row and I need to do some things with my students. So I will be doing that tomorrow and my husband's going to be home. He'll be off work unless something with the weather happens. It shouldn't. have missed some of these. I love to multi-place. I have now gotten to where I can use a seven placer, which I haven't been able to in the past, but I don't know if it's just my eyes or what, but I have the hardest time placing black, especially three tens. It doesn't matter how good that the three tens are. They're just so dark and these are so shiny that I have a hard time looking to see, okay, are they straight? Do I have all of them where they're supposed to be? So are you guys like that too? Is it just the, the dark colors? I don't have problems with the lighter colors, but the darker ones I kind of struggle with. On the struggle bus. This one hasn't been horribly bad. I'm mainly single placing. Also to the fact that I'm trying to talk in single place. Sometimes that doesn't work out so well for me. Let's see, did anything else happen? I did a couple of videos. Um, I'll go over that in a minute, but I'm thinking, did anything else happen here? Not really, other than our weather. Like I said, it's been, it was really hot. That's why everybody here is just getting sick and sniffly and allergies are just in full force for everybody, even people who don't have allergies. Some of my friends have called me and said, okay, I know you have allergies, I know your kids do. What exactly do you do? Because I've never had allergies before and I am just struggling. So, you know, I'll tell them, you know, what we do. And, and so that has seemed to have helped, but it's just really strange how all of a sudden allergies have just popped up. But I know it's a fact that um, all the leaves are falling already. And my husband always dreads that because we have so many trees. And then we have not enough place to put the leaves. We only have a very short time that we can burn. And so he has to hurry up and get as much as he can done so he can burn the leaves. If not, then he has to take them to the dump. Because we have so many, we would have 
thousands of, of bags if we were to put them in a bag. So we don't like doing that. And it also costs more to buy those bags and then not even a portion of our leaves will fit in 100 bags. So I hate to think how many bags we'd have to have. And that's just for the side yard. And our yard's not that big, but we just have too many trees here. But our tree, we love our trees. So that's kind of a, you know, what do you do? So let's see, what else? What is, what we're going to do tonight? And um, we've decided because it is a chilly day out, we're going to have some um, vegetable soup, homemade soup. I made this soup to put in our freezer. I had four containers that would have been more than enough for the three of us for probably several weeks. And here we are just at the end of September and we only have like one container left. My husband keeps getting into it. He just really likes vegetable soup. More than any other soup, I'll make chicken noodle and it's okay for him, but he loves the vegetable soup. And he doesn't even like vegetables, so I can only put a few vegetables in there. But, so that's what we're going to have tonight. And he's starting to think about getting firewood, because we didn't last year. And so we missed our, our fire. He loves to build a fire. When we bought this house, one of the conditions was plenty of space for my craft room. And then also he wanted to have a working fireplace. He did not want to have a gas fireplace, you know, with gas logs, but he wanted a gas starter, but he wanted to have just real fires. So we'll be doing that probably November, December. And then we um, will, January, we do quite a bit. We kind of taper off starting in February. So nothing else is really going on around here. You know, just same old stuff. I have gotten more diamond painting in this week since I have been home, which has been super nice. I would like to work on this one upstairs instead of in the basement where my craft room is. I've tried taking this one upstairs. It's just a little bit too large for this small little table that I have in our family room to diamond paint on. I tried doing that and I didn't like how I had to kind of fold it. Not really fold, more so bend. And I was kind of worried about it and I thought that's just not gonna work. So I will work on it on the dining room table and then I'll just have to take it back and forth when I go down to my craft room which is kind of a pain, but I've been doing that so I can get more done on this one. My goals for October are to complete this one, Cauldron of Myrrh. I want to have it completed by the end of October, especially it's a witch. It's for um, two events. It's for Festival of Witches, and um, that's hosted by Lindsay at Emeralds and Fairy Lights. And then also, it is for Drills and Chills. Both of these started on September the 1st, but they go until the end of October. And I never fill out any of the forms or anything like that. I don't know if they even have forms um, for this to fill out. But I just like to do this, you know, on my own, but... Um, as part of the event. I don't try to go for any prizes or anything usually. I mean, sometimes I do, but lately um, I haven't. I just like the fact that it gives me a reason to do something that's in my stash, and it also will tell me what I need to do in my stash, so I don't have to worry about what am I gonna do next, you know, what, especially with my stash as large as it is, it's kind of nice just to say, okay, I have to do this one if I'm going to be in this event. And speaking of events, there's one that's coming up that is hosted by Mindy. And I really have been thinking about doing it, but I don't think I want to start another large project 
and this one it is very large so I'm just not sure I don't think I'm going to be able to participate and I looked at my Harry Potter it would be perfect but it is absolutely huge and I just I don't know I'm kind of torn because I really need to get my Diana finished that one is definitely at the top of my list of all my work and projects. I want to get that one done by the end of the year. I'd like to go ahead and get it done before then if possible. I enjoy doing it, but it takes so long whenever I pull it out that I just, I just have it hanging up and I really need to go ahead and get that one finished. And I have others I want to start, other larger projects, but I don't want all these large projects going on at one time. I like to have a large project and a small project, and then my cross-stitch conversion, which I haven't given it much love lately because I wanted to try to get some of these out of the way and done. But next week, I have a month in review coming out and it's going to show what I have completed my progress for all the ones that I have working on and then my upcoming plans for October and depending on how much I get done between now and Monday over the weekend will kind of determine what my goals are definitely going to to be for October I don't think I will have this one finished by the end of the weekend. Highly unlikely that this will be finished because I still have quite a bit to go. I have other things I have to do on this weekend. I need to get my house cleaned up. That's one thing that I really need to focus on. And then if she's still not feeling well, then I'll be sitting with her. spending some time with my husband and if it's not rainy or windy we need to get out and work in our yard so it just depends and I do not like yard work do you guys like yard work I just hate doing yard work now I like planting flowers I like looking at my flowers when they bloom I love that and looking to see you know what they look like after they bloom deciding where I want, you know, certain flowers that we're going to purchase or bushes or whatever. But as for getting out there and doing the actual yard work, um, especially doing a lot of weeding, which we really need to do, that to me and raking is just not fun. Thank goodness my husband doesn't mind doing it. He actually enjoys getting out in the yard. He prefers getting out in the yard when it's really cold, though, instead of the summer. And when he has nothing else to do and he's bored, he likes to get out in the yard and do things. But by then, it's too late to plant anything. But as for me, just getting out and doing yard work, it's not something that I just absolutely look forward to. He doesn't mind mowing the grass. We don't really have that much. We have more of a flower bed in our front yard um, than grass because we have so much shade. So that's something that I will be having to do probably. I'd rather just sit and diamond paint, but I know that I can't just sit and diamond paint. Although I could if I really, if I tried hard enough, it wouldn't take much persuasion. I'm trying not to buy. I can't say I'm on a no buy because I see something that I like and it's something that I feel like I just have to have. And so I go ahead and buy it. But I'm being very selective. I have only purchased one thing and it was a small item. It was on sale this month. Um, and that's after I'm not counting the mystery box because that was the beginning of September and I did purchase that. So that was something that was very substantial. 
but I am trying to be careful because I know not only Diamond Art Club, but a lot of the other companies are going to have some really big sales and they will have it on Black Friday. And they are huge sales, at least they were last year. I really wasn't familiar with a lot of the other companies last year. Um, I was mainly buying from Diamond Art Club. And so I don't know what all of the deals were for some of the other companies, but I'm sure they were really good. So I have my wish list already made. And I have new companies now this year that I am purchasing from. And so one of my goals for next year, I want to branch out and not just keep working on the same company and work on some of those that I have purchased and that are in my stash. And I know one goal is going to be to reduce my stash but I can't keep working on them and then buying. I wish I was like Lizette at Lizette and Crafts and Tales because she has stuck with it. She has been so good about not buying anything and she, she's going through her stash first. And I think she's the only one that I have really seen that has been doing that. And I'm sorry, my hand is probably in the way. I'm just trying to get these up here. Oh, it's not in the way too terribly much. Hope you can see okay. We are partly cloudy, so I've had to have extra lights, which I don't usually like to do that. But I can't use natural light because there's not any. This morning it was chilly, but the sun was out. And then as it is getting later, that's when our wind has really picked up and now it's becoming cloudy. So what have you guys been up to? And are you going to participate in Mindy's big event? And I'll put the information or the link where you can find that information. I just, I really, really want to, and I am really having to hold myself back. And let me tell you, it's hard. I never thought that it would be that difficult. Just, you know, just don't do it. But I just really, really want to. I even opened the Harry Potter box last night and saw how huge it was. But then there's a lot of color blocking on it too. And it is for two months, but... I really need to focus on what I have. So I would love to hear if you're planning on doing that. I know that um, a couple of you I think are, and you don't have to finish. So I thought that's a plus. I wouldn't have to finish if I can just get this done and then work on that one sporadically, I might be okay. But it's like, do I really want to add more to what I'm already doing? And unfortunately, I think my answer keeps coming up. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not keep adding more and more? It's not like I'm buying them because I've already paid for them. But it's just the fact that I need to get some of these done. And these large ones, it's like, what do you do with them? I haven't really thought that far. With the Harry Potter, I have no idea what I would do with it, where I would put it. And even rolling it up, I don't know where, unless I just put it back in the box. I may have to do that until I decide what exactly I want to do with it. But if I did that one, it would be the largest one that I have done. It's even larger than my Diamond Painting Deutschlands. At least I think it is. I know it is on the one that I'm working on now. But the ones I just purchased, I'm not sure exactly what the dimensions of those are, but I think it's even larger than those. But there is a lot of color blocking. And there's not with Diamond Painting Deutschland. So, 
I am just really enjoying this canvas. The one issue that I've had, and it's not really an issue, I think it'll be okay once it's all done. There are some noticeable gaps in here, and it's not from me because I have checked this, I have used a straightener, but I've noticed that some of the drills on this kit, some of these are the newer Diamond Art Club drills, and some of these drills are the older ones. And so they're kind of mixed in, and so they're different sizes, and so it's causing gaps. And I didn't really realize that until after I had started working on it, and I looked at it, and I thought, why are there so many gaps in here? If you look away from it, you um, look at it without a light pad, it looks fine. I know there are several that are doing this one, and I have seen it on um, Facebook on, and on the, um, the different Facebook groups, and it looks really good. So I don't know if all of these had the mixed drills in them or if certain ones did, if it was just random. But I can tell that some of these are the older drills and some of the newer ones. But it is very shiny. And I'm loving all the colors. I love how this, the purple and the pinks, how it just blends in with the blacks and grays. It has turned out just really, really pretty. And this one, hopefully I will have more. I know I'll have more before um, I have my Monday month in review and that will be the first month in review that I've done so I'm really curious to hear um, once I do that how you like it any suggestions that you have and if you have any suggestions for my channel please feel free to let me know um, I would love to hear um, some comments from you that way I'll know what I should be focusing on or if you like the content that I'm providing I looked yesterday and I have now 77 videos uploaded. I didn't realize I had that many, so that's really good. Okay guys, I am going to stop here. I think that this may be a little bit sooner than normal. I need to go check on my daughter, make sure that she's okay, and I need to do a couple of other things. But I hope that you enjoyed this ribbon chat. If you were working alongside me, I hope that you were able to get some work done as well. And I hope that you enjoyed the content. If you did, please give me a like. That definitely helps. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I think you would like it here. You will also be notified um, when I have future uploads. And so that um, would help me as well. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great weekend and keep on crafting. Bye. Does she notice the things I notice? How she practices piano on her thigh Imagining the keys inside her mind Does she notice The things I notice How her eyes wander the room when it gets quiet Searching for solutions in the silence but I'm here, I'm here
space between us now it's just like miles And I've only ever fit inside the shadows But I'm here I'm here Everywhere, I'm over here. Everywhere, I'm over here. 